Hey guys, Joe Tunney here at Infinity of Kirkland in Kirkland, Washington. And for those of you on eBay, AutotraderCars.com and the like, welcome to Washington on a beautiful day here in the middle of July. We're taking a look at a beautiful 1997 Chrysler Sebring. Clearly not our standard inventory here at a high-end Infinity dealership, but in the world of 1997 Chrysler Sebrings, this is about as good as it gets. This car has only 41,000 miles, so fantastically low miles for a 1997 vehicle. And it's a fully loaded, fully accessorized LXI as well. I'm gonna pop the hood, we're gonna take a look underneath. We'll start there. Now, the Sebring Coupe is different from the Sebring sedan. And in fact, it shares much of uh, its entire architecture with uh, Mitsubishi. The underpinnings of this car are the same as the Mitsubishi Gallant, and the interior is the same as the Mitsubishi Eclipse. There are two different engine choices. There's a four-cylinder, which is a Chrysler engine, or a six-cylinder, this engine right here, which is a Mitsubishi engine. It has 168 horsepower. The four-cylinder comes with either a five-speed or an automatic. The V6 only comes with the automatic transmission. The four-cylinder with a manual is actually a little bit quicker than the six-cylinder with an automatic, but I think most people will discover that the six-cylinder with the automatic is the much more popular way to go. Its uh, power is smooth and easy, and it's also uh, just, it has a lot more uh, ease of driving, a lot more pleasure of driving. It's lower revving, quieter, just everything about it is nicer. And then, of course, the Japanese build quality Japanese car manufacturers are legendary for build quality, where some of those 1990s four-cylinder American engines were a little bit hit and miss. Again, only 41,000 original miles, and so we want to take a look around all the rails and everything like that, see if there's any uh, indications of body work or uh, prior body repair. It can be harder on an older car, but when we start off by seeing things like old stickers and stuff like that, believe it or not, that's a good thing. It's an indicator of originality. Brand new stuff is sometimes an indicator that something bad happened that needed to be replaced. If I look at the screws that hold the uh, hood together, the, they've never been broken. These seals have never been broken, and so this looks completely original. These screws, again, they look old and dated, but believe it or not, that's a good thing, not a bad thing. Coming along to the passenger side, these screws look original, but I can see a little bit of a halo right here, a little less right here, and so it does not look like the screws have ever turned, but maybe just over the years, this is pulled away by maybe two millimeters or thereabouts, a little less than that here, maybe one millimeter, and then these look completely clean. Whether this bumped something early in its life, it's hard to know, but it actually looks really, really good. This is very typical of what you'd see from an original 1997 vehicle. Again, if you don't want to take my word for it, I totally get that. If you'd like us to take it to a body shop or to a dealer who represents this kind of car, whatever you want. I mean, we have nothing to hide. Come take a look around. Everything looks great on the outside. I'll notice here some light scratches almost like a, a, a nice cat scratch that comes all the way across here. And so the, although it's not that big of a deal, if you'd like some close-up photographs or anything like that so you can make the most intelligent decision, we're definitely happy to provide those for you. If you're looking at the tires, both the front and the rear, they still have all their porcupine quills even on the top. So the tires are brand new all the way around. If we take a look at the inside of the car, two things I noticed. One, the seats look fantastic. And two, it's missing its little lever uh, cover right there for the uh, back recline. But the doors look really nice. The vents are really nice. Windows, locks, everything seems just fine. Steering wheel looks great. Wood uh, enhancement inside. It's a wood tone, obviously, but it does look really, really good. We'll come take a look in the back. Now, I'm gonna notice right here, just a little bit of rub and then some paint loss in this area right here. And so, you know, maybe backing up into the garage or who knows what happened, but it's there. And again, if you'd like me to take some more uh, pinpoint photographs of that, the uh, I'm certainly more than happy to. The bumper itself, just to be uh, picky, I'm just noticing a couple of little things here, here, and here. A little bit of a scuff there, a little bit of a scuff there. And the, uh, again, the same holds true. If you want me to get anything closer, uh, I'm certainly happy to do it. If I look at the fenders in the rear, 
The one rule of thumb whenever you're looking at, at any body panel is that since cars are built by robots, whatever the look, texture, feel, uh, concept of welding is, it needs to be the same on both sides. So welds, as a rule, can be kind of inconsistent to look at, but when they look the same on one side as they do on the other, then that's a pretty good place to start. And then also we like to look at the screws and look like if the, uh, if the screws have ever been turned or the seals have ever been broken original uh, part number for the uh, trunk lid. This is just the kind of stuff that we look to, like to see for originality. Again, we can never know definitively on an older car like this if it's been in an accident or not, but just professionally speaking, there are things that you can do to uh, limit your exposure and, and make a more intelligent choice. This car does look completely original. Passenger side. Again, just to be devil's advocate, I see a, a little rock chip right there, a little scuff line right there. Nothing too, nothing too dramatic at all. Inside, the passenger side looks just as good as the driver's side. I'm going to jump inside. Now, the miles read 41,519, and we are selling it as actual miles because it was traded in as actual miles. And so we know sometimes on a car fax, there can be some kind of reporting anomaly or something like that. The most important thing, not even if you buy a car from us, if you buy a car from any dealership, is that they sign on the odometer statement that the miles are actual. Anytime that a dealer signs as miles are exceed mechanical limits or just not guaranteed for any reason, it's the one form consumers never know to look at, and it is the most important form. It's called the green form in the state of Washington. It's where the dealer acknowledges that the miles are either they're not sure or they are guaranteeing the miles, and so we are guaranteeing the miles on this one. Glove box, everything works just fine. Everything opens nicely. I'm noticing a little bit of wear right here on that, uh, on that uh, wood uh, trim, and then everything looks nice in the center console. See, this stays up just fine. I can smell that this was a smoker's car. I'm not going to say it was a heavy smoker's car by any stretch of the imagination. I can just smell it, and I know that some people are really sensitive. If you're a little bit sensitive, you're not going to care. But if you're really sensitive, the uh, we can dive in and have an independent third uh, party really tell you. Uh, you know, it smells more like shampoo than anything else. But at the same time, I know for sure that this car has been smoked. In. It doesn't look like there's any uh, cigarette burns or anything like that, but at the same time, I just want you to have all of the information and then you can make the most intelligent decision. One quick thing, I'm gonna jump out of the car and go back in front. One thing I do wanna share with you we're talking about originality is there is something known as a VIN sticker and we saw it on the, on the deck lid there in the back. But whenever you see a VIN sticker, you want to look at the body panels around the rest of the car and make sure that they have a VIN sticker as well. Because when the car is built, they don't know what, what uh, car it's going to, VIN stickers are only applied after final assembly. And so if I have to go buy a hood from Chrysler, they have no idea that it was going to go to this car. So it doesn't have any kind of VIN sticker on it. These factory VIN stickers, it's actually a felony to try and trick the system and put your own on. And I'm sure nobody would go to that kind of trouble on such an inexpensive car as this. But if I'm buying this car, I want to make sure it's as original as I possibly can. It's not a ton of money, but I want 100% of the value of whatever money it is that I am spending. And so I'm going to tell you, the VIN sticker is here. The VIN sticker is on the left-hand corner of this fender right here. The VIN sticker is on the upper corner of this fender right here. So I know that both the, both the front fenders and the hood are completely original. Let's take one more walk around the car. There are two VIN stickers in the front door area. You always have one on, on coupes. You have one here, and then you have one for the fender as well as, as, well as the original uh, build sticker. And then if you come back around, we already saw the one on the trunk. One on the door here, and then one on the fender here. So completely original. It's completely original too in that we haven't done any of the airbrush or anything like that. And let me just point out one other little area where there's some scuffs. And so we could paint the whole thing. We could paint the whole thing blue if that's what you really wanted. But for the kind of person that I believe is gonna ultimately buy this car, 
I think they're gonna want it as original as original can be. And so I'm just gonna leave it completely original, price it as low as the, the market will uh, allow for. And for somebody who wants a neat thing, 41,000 mile 1997 V6, fun, good looking coupe. This is kind of a one of a kind, maybe in the entire country. If you have any questions at all, please don't hesitate to call me. My name is Joe Tunney here at Infinity of Kirkland. You can call me anytime, 425-821-1600, or just drop me an email at joet at infinityofkirkland.com.